Before operating any piece of equipment, please adhere to all safety and warning labels provided in your operation manual. This video is intended to be a brief explanation on what the features are and how to operate the Aaron Arc 300 gas all-in-one power system with remote control panel. This machine has a comprehensive array of controls and indicators for each function of the machine system. Understanding the correct operation of the Aaron Arc 300 gas unit will help you recognize when the system is operating properly. Please refer to the operation manual for further operating procedures and explanation. At the heart of the Aranarc 300 gas machine is the remote control panel. This panel has the ability to be mounted in a variety of locations on your vehicle and can operate multiple functions of the Aranarc 300 gas. The remote control panel has several sections. The machine ignition switch and indicator lamps are located at the top of the panel as well as the hour meter. To the right are the DC welder and charge features. The CC and CV toggle switches are located here while the DC charger slash welder toggle switches are located here. To the right are the DC charger 12 volt and 24 volt toggle switches. The volts and amp manual adjustment knob is located below. Below are the generator controls including thermal breakers, the 240 and 120 volt receptacles, the AC generator control on off switch, and the battery boost slash charge cable connections. To the right is the compressor air pressure gauge and the compressor on off toggle switch. Below are the welder lead connections. Refer to your operational manual when looking at major machine component locations. Prior to operating, make sure that all oils are at their proper levels. Add as needed. Make sure any obstructions are removed from blocking adequate airflow to the machine. All user functions are controlled at the control panel. Check to make sure that all switches are in the off position prior to starting the machine. Turn the engine ignition switch to the on position and wait 3 to 5 seconds for the fuel pump to prime the system. Continue turning to the start position until the engine starts. When the switch is let go, it will revert back to the on position. Let the engine run at idle for 3 to 5 minutes to allow for a warm up sequence. When using the engine throttle control functions, the engine speed is controlled by three factors. Number one, the level of air pressure in the tank and the position of the compressor switch. Number two, the position of the welder switch on the unit control panel and the use of the welder. And number three, the position of the generator switch on the control panel. Refer to table 5A, engine throttle control function conditions in the operational manual to understand how the engine speed relates to the demands of the machine's output functions. Warning. When attempting any welding procedure, the operator must be aware of all general safety practices and procedures. Refer to your operation manual for further assistance. The variable power dial adjusts the welder amperage, 40 to 300 amps, or voltage, 15 to 30 volts, for the desired weld heat. Turning the power dial clockwise increases the amperage or voltage and turning the power dial counterclockwise decreases the amperage or voltage. The power dial may be adjusted while welding. With the engine turned off, attach the weld cables to the correct weld lugs. Depending on the welding that is to be done, typical use would be electrode positive and the work ground cable negative. Turn the engine on. Determine the type of welding you plan to perform. CC for constant current, or stick and arc welding, or CV for constant voltage for wire or MIG welding. Select the CC mode weld on the control panel. Note, in CC mode, the unit will stay in standby mode until you strike an arc to weld. 
Adjust the variable power dial for the proper amperage or voltage depending on which mode you are in. In CC mode, the range is 40 to 300 amps. The green LED will illuminate showing which setting is digitally displaying. Attach the work or ground cable to workpiece being repaired. Insert the appropriate welding rod into the electrode clamp. Touch electrode to workpiece and allow the engine to ramp up to full speed. At this time, the unit will be producing weld output and deliver the selected amperage through the electrode. The amps will fluctuate in the display and this is normal as the system is monitoring the amperage output at the end of the electrode. If there is no weld activity after 30 seconds, the engine will return to idle and wait for the operator to repeat the above process. To utilize the CV or constant voltage welding mode, you will need a wire feeder for this operation, such as a suitcase feeder that is of a voltage sensing configuration. These are obtained from any local weld supply store, online, or Van Air can assist with these options. Attach the weld cables to the correct weld lugs. Place the ground clamp from the suitcase feeder and the ground clamp from the Aaron Arc 300 on the workpiece. Start the engine. On the control panel, place the DC charger slash welder switch in the welder mode and place the CC slash CV switch in the CV mode. Adjust the power dial on the Aaron Arc 300 to the appropriate voltage setting for the material you'll be welding. Adjust the power dial on the suitcase feeder for the material you'll be welding. At any time during welding, the power dial may be adjusted to the desired amperage level. When using the CV constant voltage welding mode, the unit will ramp up to full speed and stay until the weld selection is changed to off or the mode is changed from CV to CC. You will be able to select the DC voltage output to your required need. Fine-tune the wire feed speed at the suitcase and you are ready to weld. The voltage will fluctuate in the display. This is normal as the system is monitoring the voltage output being supplied to the suitcase welder. For connection and operation of any other wire feeder, consult the manufacturer for required equipment and operating instructions. The battery charging system operates off the DC welding generator and not the main AC power generator. Warning! Do not charge or boost while in the weld mode. Injury or machine damage may occur. With the engine off, ensure that the welder, DC charger switch, and any other engine control switch is in the off position. Prior to hooking up battery cables to the Aaron Arc 300 gas, Connect the battery cables to the vehicle itself, red cable to positive port, black to negative port. Remove the red rubber protection cap. Attach battery boost cables to correct connector on the remote control panel. Start the engine and wait for all indicator lights to turn off. Place the DC welder slash charger selector toggle switch in the DC charger position, and then the DC charger mode switch to the correct position. The engine should come up to operating speed. The battery is now being charged. When the machine begins to cycle between high and low idle, then the battery is fully charged. Note, if the voltage is low for either 12 or 24 volt boost, the mode lamp will flash to indicate that the system is able to be overridden. If you are in 12 volt boosting, but the battery connected is less than 2.5 volts and the light is blinking, Hold the voltage selection switch for no more than 30 seconds to override. If you are in 24 volt boosting but the battery connected is less than 15 volts and the light is blinking, hold the voltage selection switch for no more than 30 seconds to override. In both cases, the lights will stay illuminated and the engine will ramp up when charging is taking place. To disconnect the charging system, Place the DC welder slash charger selector toggle switch to the off position. Allow the engine to idle down, then shut down the engine. 
Now it is safe to disconnect the clamps from the battery being charged and the battery cable connection on the front of the machine. The Aaron Arc 300 power system unit features a high pressure 175 psi air system. Check the maximum air pressure rating on the air tools you will be using. The operator is responsible for regulating the air pressure when necessary. Start the engine. Turn the compressor switch to the on position. As soon as the compressor switch is toggled to the on position, the engine will accelerate from low idle state to high speed and remain as long as the compressor switch is in the on position and air is being used. Note, initial air pressure gauge reading depends upon compressor status when previously shut off. Air pressure accumulates in the air tank to desired working pressure. If air pressure builds to full pressure with no air usage for two and a half minutes, the compressor clutch will disengage and the engine will return to idle speed. Start the engine. Make sure the tools you will be operating with the generator are in the off position. Turn the generator switch on the control panel to the on position. Note. Only plug power cords into the generator receptacles after the machine is running at full speed. Be careful not to overload the rated capacity of the generator, 6,800 watts or 28 amps at 250 volts continuous. Refer to your operation manual, Wattage Requirements for Common Receptacle Units for Power Requirements. Warning. If one of the generator circuit breakers is tripped, the cause of the overload must be determined before the circuit breaker is reset and work is resumed. You can now turn your electrical tool on and perform operation. When finished using the Aranarc 300 gas, shut off any tools or other items that are drawing power from the generator or compressed air from the air tank. Close all service valves. Unplug any power cords that are plugged into the generator receptacles. Turn the compressor, generator, and welder switches on the control panel to the off position. Allow the machine to run for three to five minutes to allow for a cool down sequence. Turn the ignition switch to the off position once you have allowed the machine to cool down. For further operating procedures and functions, please refer to your operational manual.